Hello, my name is Anthony Cummins and I am a historical researcher and an author. And what I'd like to do today is do a review and promote the work of a gentleman that I think does superb work. It's not in a field I know anything about, but the books he does are superb and I would like everybody else to at least get involved, not only with his books, but what he does. So what we're going to do today is we're going to review this book. It's called The Lexicon of Arms and Armour from Iran, a study of symbols and terminology. It is an absolutely beautiful book. It is it's quite thick and it is done in very, very high quality. I'll try and get this close to the camera, as you can see there. It's mainly an A to Z of terms used. Um, obviously, he's asked me to use the word Persian. Um, and then at the end, it has a collection of images of historical weapons. The actual book itself, as I say, is more of an A to Z. So what you actually do is you pick it up, you'll come inside and you'll find it is an extremely detailed A to Z as well. It's extremely detailed in its actual um, content and it's full of pictures, information, it's got the original um, language in, it's got everything you would need if you were studying this area of medieval warfare. But what I'm going to do is, because that can be quite boring for some people, it's just it's an A to Z, so some people might find that boring. But I, what I have is an ambition to change history from highbrow, high-end, boring work into extremely exciting and accessible information. So what I'm going to do is, I've picked out a few things from this book, and I'm going to take you through it. And I want to show, not that this is boring, this book is superb, but I want to show you how you can take what would be an A to Z, or maybe some people wouldn't enjoy, and turn it into an image in your mind. So let's go through a couple of the actual posts. To fend someone off with the butt of the spear. So this was just taken from my searching through the book, and the idea of this is these Persian warriors would actually have their spear, but at one end they would have the lance end or the spear end, and at the other end they would have their butt, or sometimes with spikes on and things like that, obviously different medieval weapons. But this idea is that when somebody attacks you, you use the spear to fend off their attack and then come back and strike them with it. Or how about this? This is a, a stick, um, a, a staff if you want, that's actually sheathed in iron. So it's a really hard weapon. It's got a wooden core and an iron outside and you can brain people with it. You can smash open their skulls. And of course you could use the skill before of taking the spear button, knocking that out of the way to stab people. But you get a real feel of solid weapons, solid history, and start to get the imagination going about what these p things mean and what this A to Z means. This one is excellent. It says where you're holding someone by the throat and you're strangling them and uh, you're in sort of hand-to-hand -hand combat and you're strangling each other. What you would do is you take your hand and you grab the upper lip. When you grab the upper lip, you twist it away and that will pull them out of direction. Of course, if you've done martial arts, you know balance is controlled from this point just beyond here, just inside, behind the neck there. If you affect that, you affect their balance. So you get into a grapple with some Persian knight or however you want to class this, some Middle Eastern knight. You grab his um, lips and you pull him that way and you push his head over and he should go over. And then, of course, you can reach for your wooden stick sheathed in iron and beat him to death all day long if you like. Attacking the hands, something that people often miss or when they're, sorry, something people often miss when they're studying historical or medieval warfare is most attacks, lots of attacks go for the hands. You've got someone charging in, they may be armoured, lots of attacks go for the inside of the wrist, the inside of the hands, the top of the hands, anything to smash open the weapons, to cut open the hands, anything, because remember, a soldier, a warrior, a knight, whatever, is nothing without his hands. If you break someone's hands, there's not much they can do after that, apart from Monty Python style and trying to bite your legs off. How about this? A lasso, so a lasso made from the hide of a lion. So you've killed a lion and you've stripped it into little strips and you've tied it all together and you've created a lasso out of lion hide. I just had to put this one in the review. How amazing is that? Never even thought there. Where do they get lions from? But you know, so whether it's actually lion or not, I'm not sure that's just from the thing, but it seems to be lion skin, stripped down, and of course they use it for lassoes. That was a small selection of the actual, the A to Z. There are hundreds if not thousands of actual 
quotes in there, words in there, it's like a dictionary of terms and dictionary of weapons. But now what I want to do is give you some of my favourite ones that I actually enjoyed and I'll just go through them quickly. One of the techniques in the book is actually, is you feint to the left with a spear, so you pretend to go to the left, or you're going to cut from the left, but in reality you bring it under and cut down the hands. So you would come in, I'm the Persian knight, you're the other Persian knight, we're in the Middle East somewhere, and um, I would come in from the left, pull under, and then rip out against the back of your hands, or you're under your hands and cut. So this again is the idea of feinting, which, uh, you know, is in most martial arts, but it's interesting to pull out of these books. The concept of bloodthirsty swords and bloodthirsty arrowheads. I didn't get to do much background research on this, but when I was reading it, I thought, that's excellent. There are swords that are deemed as bloodthirsty, or arrows which I presume have a will of their own, or the sword has a will of its own, and it craves blood. Which, you know, is a great and romantic idea for the historian. Kissing sword hilts. Now it talks about how you kiss the sword hilt and also it talks about an eyewitness account where the sword is on the floor and two people before they go into combat, it might have been ritual combat, it might have been training, they kneel down and kiss the hilt and put their head to the hilt of the sword, then stand up and salute and go at it. Probably ritual combat, it didn't go into it but I've got some of the author's other work so I'll go and check that up. The book also talks about shields. Now, different shields, wide shields, rim shields, shields with seven or eight bucklers on inside the shield. All the different things, pages and pages of information on shields alone. But above all, my favourite out of all the book was the weapon called the Brain Splitter. So this, apparently, you would come in with and somebody's head is there and you just carve through the head, smashing it open, brains everywhere, blood dripping down the face and an explosion behind them as the very, very cool weapon, the Brain Splitter, hits to the field of battle. That's all I'm going to do for now, but I want you to remember it's this book, well, let's read it again, it's called The Lexicon of Arms and Armour from Iran, A Study of Symbols and Terminology. Uh, I will put the link to this below there, and I would suggest that while it's an A to Z and some people find, might find it difficult, can pick out so much information. And the gentleman is leading his field of this uh, research and the Middle Eastern combat, Middle Eastern medieval combat that is. And uh, he does great work and I've got a few of his books now and I'll do a review for one more soon. The book is expensive but it's very high quality. So if you're into medieval martial arts or into medieval warfare, I definitely recommend it just simply because if you have the cash, why not gain more knowledge on a different area of medieval warfare. But if you don't have the cash or you can't afford that or you don't want to pay that much for it, what you should do is at least visit the author's website, you should visit the author's YouTube page and press like on their Facebook. I'll put all the links below so you can go and see them. So remember, see the author's website, click like on Facebook and go to YouTube and watch some of the demonstrations they do. They do some good demonstrations. So I'll leave that up to you. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it sparked some enthusiasm for Persian combat and Persian and Middle Eastern m medieval warrior arts. Remember, we always forget about the Middle East. We think about the East and we think about the West, but the Middle East had their own history and their own amazing collection of medieval martial arts. So I'm glad you enjoyed that. And before I go, I'm going to leave you with a short selection of pictures from the back of the book to show you the quality of the images inside. Thank you very much. My name is Anthony Cummins and I hope to see you again for the next review of this gentleman's work.